Hi, everybody. This is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. And welcome to our video user guide for our premium member ETF or exchange traded fund reports. Uh, most of you know that the BCI team produces both stock and ETF reports on a weekly basis, in addition to our monthly blue chip and quarterly high dividend yield reports. So the purpose of this video is to serve as a user guide to explain the content of the ETF report. And at the end, we'll show you how to set up a portfolio and calculations using the top three performers, this particular report. So if we take a look at the report that we have on the screenshot here, you could see that we have the report dated 7-5-2017. Okay, so uh, that's the report that we're looking at. And if you take a look at the top paragraph, what we do is we explain the screening process involved. So it's based on a three month time frame. So we're looking at the performance of these exchange traded funds over the past three weeks and we compare them to that of the S&P 500. And we of course want them to be outperforming. So they're gonna have a, an RS, a relative strength rating of 60 or higher, putting them in the top 40% of all ETFs uh, over the past three months. Now, uh, we also wanna make sure that they have an average trading volume uh, of 250,000 shares per day uh, or higher. And we eliminate leveraged ETFs. Those are the ones that target two to three times the performance of an ETF on a daily basis. Okay, we also wanna make sure that there is a minimum of 100 contracts of open interest, and that relates to option liquidity uh, in terms of getting favorable pricing if we ever need to buy back our options. So those are the criteria that we use uh, when we're screening for stocks. Now, further down on page one, we actually chart the top three performers at that particular point in time. And you could see that we have XBI as the top performer, TUR next, EUFN next. And they were uh, up 15 to 19% over the past three months, while the S&P 500 was up 3%. So uh, they significantly outperformed uh, the overall market over the past three months. So these are the securities that we focus in on. And then we move down from page one to page two, and then you see uh, the next three uh, securities, four through six, uh, in terms of price performance. And that was KWEB, EWI, and EWY, which were up between 10 and 14% compared to the 3% of the S&P 500. So that's the top of page two. Now we're gonna scroll down to the bottom of page two, where we give you additional information on those six securities. Okay, so we name them, we give you the ticker symbol for them, and then we give you the price of the, uh, of the security at that particular point in time. XBI was trading at $79 and it was up 19%. And so you have that information. We also put down the color that they represented on the chart. So you have the top chart, the lower chart, the three securities on each, the price, and the price performance. Now there's a note at the bottom of page two that there are other funds to consider later on in the report, and those will come uh, in a couple of more pages. We'll show you that in a little bit. Now we're moving on to page three of the ETF report, and these relate to the uh, select sector spiders. And those are the uh, select sector spiders. These are securities that, have, uh, that break up the S&P 500 into 10 different categories. So um, if you wanna stick with blue chip stocks, for example, uh, then what we do is we name, we name this, the uh, ETF and we give you the ticker symbol. Okay, so uh, page, uh, this page of the report, page three, just lists the select sector spiders. Again, uh, divides the S&P 500 up into 10 different categories, and we can then select the best performers at any particular point in time, and that'll keep us into the top one third of the S&P 500 at all times. Now we're scrolling down to page four, 
where we actually chart these top three uh, select sector spiders. At the time, XLV was uh, the top performer up 8%, XLF 7 XLI 6%. And you could see that we charted at on the S&P 500, which was up 3% at that particular point in time. So if you want to stay in the top third of the S&P 500, this is a good way to do it. Now, underneath that particular chart, we have all the ETFs that are eligible, the top six plus the others that are coming up soon, that have weekly options associated with them. Not all ETFs have weeklies associated with them, but the ones on this list do. So if you like to trade uh, particularly uh, weekly options, then this is the place to go. And you, we start with the top performer, XBI, down to EWW, which was up 5%. Again, this list are the eligible ETFs that also have weekly options associated with them. Now we're going to go down to page five of the report, which also has additional information on the select sector spiders. So uh, we're going to focus in on the uh, the top the three month returns which you see over here, but we also give all different time frames from one day you know up to a year, and uh, but the ones we focus in on the three months because they correspond to the reports. So if we were going to look at SPY the whole market, we would see that was up three point five nine percent in the past three months. So we would look for securities that have beat that, like XLF like XLI and XLV. And those are the ones you saw charted on page three. Okay, so that's at the top of page five. Now let's scroll down a little bit. And here are the other ETFs to consider in addition to the six that you saw on pages one and two. And of course, these are up a lesser amount than those were because they're lower down on the list. That doesn't mean you shouldn't consider them but you could see that the uh, percentage gain over the last three months ranged from 5 to 9%. And remember, the S&P was up 3%. So they all outperform. Uh, and of course, we also give the price. You know, So you know, depending on the size of your portfolio, you may want to go with Fez over IYT because it's less costly. So we also give you the price, and that may be a consideration. Here's another one, uh, SOX, which has been on our list quite frequently the last several months, and that's all the way up to $141. So it may be good for some, but not for others. All right, let's go down to page six now. And this particular page focuses in on the uh, inverse exchange traded funds. And those are funds that are inversely related to certain market benchmarks. As an example, PSQ will go in the opposite direction as the NASDAQ 100 or the uh, top 100 non-financial companies that trade on the NASDAQ exchange. So uh, in a bear market like we had in 2008, these securities would have been amazing to make a lot of money. Now, uh, let's just uh, have a look at the four that we chart for you each week. PSQ, which is uh, short for the Qs, DOG, which is short for the Dow 30, SH, which is short for the S&P 500, and RWM, which is short for the Russell 2000. And they all have decent option liquidity, and they're geared to major market benchmarks, and that's why we use them. Below that is the actual charting of those four securities uh, in a, uh, comparison to the S&P 500, which was up 3%. And the others range from being down 4% to being down 5%. So generally speaking, these securities are going to be underperforming the market because the market generally goes up. But there are certain times in confirmed bear markets, as I said before, like in 2008, where we may want to give these securities some consideration because they can, uh, you know, they're going the opposite direction of the market. If the market is just going down and down and down, these are going to be going up and up and up. Now, the final two pages relate to implied volatility. Okay, so the implied volatility of the ETFs represent the market assessment of the price movement of the security over the next year based on one standard deviation. So the higher the implied volatility, that means the riskier the, riskier the uh, investment and the higher the premium. 
So at the time, we always give the S&P 500 uh, IV on top it was 882, so you can kind of have a means of comparison. So for example, XBI had triple the implied volatility as that of the S&P 500. So if your risk tolerance level is low, you may want to avoid that, uh, or you may want to go with something uh, a little lower in implied volatility. If we scroll down a little bit, you know, you have VGK at 1263. So, you know, one size doesn't fit all and, you know, certain IVs are more appropriate for certain investors than others. And the last page of the report, page eight, gives you all the rest of the implied volatilities. And you could see that, you know, they can be really low like FXE at 683. And, uh, you know, they could be much, much higher like the banks, the bank ETFs here were over 20. So uh, that's it, different strokes for different folks. And those are the eight pages of the report, but I actually have one more prepared for you. So let me scroll down over here. And this shows you how you might use the report to set up a portfolio. Now, if you remember back to uh, the first page, the top three performers were XBI, TUR, and EUFN. So we're gonna assume now a portfolio of $50,000. Now, we always want to keep 2 to 4% of that on the sidelines in case we have to buy back an option. So in our minds, we're saying, okay, uh, we're going to do 48,000. We're going to allocate 16,000 per position. So what we do is we take, let's take XBI to start with. And we, we looked it up and saw it was trading at 77.21. We divide that into 16,000, round it off to the nearest 100, and that means 200 uh, shares will be purchased and will then sell to contracts. And the cost of those 200 shares is 15442 And then we do that for TUR and EUFN. Uh, the price divided into 16000 rounded off to a particular number of shares. That's how many contracts we sell. And we total it out to 47464 which leaves us still $2,500 on the sidelines in case we have to buy back an option to take advantage of exit strategy opportunities. Now, uh, let's just clear that up and move down to the bottom of this screenshot where we actually, um, maybe I can make this a little bit bigger. Let me just see for a second here. Yeah, okay. So um, let's say, for example, uh, we look up the uh, options chain for XBI and we're going to look at slightly out of the money strikes. So 7721, we'll look at the 78 strike. These are all five week returns, as you see here. And uh, we take the time value and divide it into the uh, price per share. And that gives us our return on our option or RU. And you could see that the return on the options averaged uh, over 2% if you average it out. And the upside potential, if the price moved up to the strike, uh, gave us an average of an additional one and a half percent. So we have an opportunity for maybe three and a half percent if the price of the stock moves from current market value up to the strike price. That would be kind of in an ideal world. But the, uh, this is uh, the multiple tab of the Elman calculator, which uh, those of you who are premium members, which is many of you listening to this video, uh, you have the access to the uh, basic calculator and the elite version of the Elman calculator and the resources download section of the premium site. Those of you who are not premium members, you can get a free copy of the basic calculator at the free resources link on the top black bar of the general site. So, uh, but this is the multiple tab and it's available in both versions of the Elman calculator. So that's how you might use the ETF report to, um, create a portfolio. It just gives you kind of a general idea. That's what user guides are. They're not, it's not specific uh, recommendations, but it kind of gives you a framework to use when you're fabricating your portfolio based on these reports. So I hope you found this user guide useful. We decided to do it in video format. A lot of people enjoy that. Hope you did. And uh, if you have any questions, you can email me at alan, A-L-A-N, at thebluecollarinvestor.com or Barry uh, at thebluecollarinvestor.com. We do answer all of our emails. So that said, I want to thank everybody for listening, wishing you the best in investing. As always, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. Take care, everybody.